Welcome to Patasco United Methodist Church on this beautiful, sunny, brisk morning. I love it. Um, we have a lot of things going on at our church, so here are some of the events that are coming up in March. Okay, mark your calendars for our baked potato bar and game night on Saturday, March 2nd from 5 to 8. The next day, the blood drive will be Sunday, March 3rd from 10.30 to 2.30. Please sign up to donate or staff the event. You are invited to attend a life care planning session presented by the West Licking Circuit on Saturday, March 16th from 9 a.m. to noon at Kirkersville UMC. Learn about living wills healthcare power of attorney, and other legal means to let your family know your wishes. Child care is provided. And please RSVP using the link that was emailed this week. Ooh, got a lot of things going on. Uh, the Pataskala Community Easter Egg Hunt is planned for the following Saturday, March 23rd, at Foundation Park. This will be the first community Easter egg hunt to be held since COVID and PUMC has agreed to contribute. We have all of the plastic Easter eggs, but we need the goodies to fill them. So we're asking for individually wrapped candy donations, but unfortunately no chocolate or nuts that will fit into Easter eggs. We got comments we have plenty from of nuts in the congregation, yeah. just saying. <laughs> Uh, please place donations in the gray bin in the welcome area. And also that same day, the spring cleanup day will be held. So that's Saturday, March 23rd. Coffee and donuts will be available at 8.30 and work will begin at 9 a.m. to wrap up at noon. The trustees need help with several tasks that include sit down jobs, jobs outside and inside to prepare the church for the Easter season. And that's all I have. Excellent. So it sounds like all hands on deck. Welcome, beloved of God, to this time of fellowship and worship. We are here to praise the Lord who loves us and calls us to follow him. We are here to listen to his word, which will challenge us, but will also comfort us. We are here to share our gifts and our abilities, which God has entrusted to us for his glory. Let us worship God this morning in spirit and in truth. The centering thought is by Matthew Henry, who shows us what we must do if Jesus is our doctor. He says, those that will be Christ's patients must attend on him, converse with him, receive instruction and reproof from him as those did that followed him and must resolve that they will never forsake him.
we really need to have that camera pointed at the keyboard when he's doing that. It's amazing to watch. Would you please stand, if you're able, for our call to worship? Let us turn our minds from human things. Let us set our minds on the right things. We will deny ourselves and take up our cross. We will lose all that we may gain all. We do not rest in our own strength. Our faith in Jesus saves us. Will you join me in our opening hymn, number 116? Uh, verses 1 and 4. At this time, I will pray for us. God, you have given us everything. What can we give in return for our lives? Be our guide on our Lenten journey. Help us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. We welcome your direction in our lives as we worship you today. Amen. You may be seated. mic on and then allow me to pray for us. I'm not going to blame you. It's my fault. <laughs> Let me pray. Gracious and loving God, 
We thank you for your word that speaks to us today. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, the living word who suffered many things and was rejected by the leaders of his time, who was killed and rose again after three days. We thank you for his example of obedience, faithfulness, and love. We confess, O God, that we often fail to follow him. We are tempted by the things of this world, the mindset of this life, and we confess that we are often ashamed of his words in this sinful generation. We seek to save our own lives rather than lose them for his sake in the Gospels. We forget that you've called us to deny ourselves, to take up your cross, and to follow him. Forgive us, Lord, and renew our minds and hearts. Help us to set our minds on the things of God, not the things of humanity. Help us to embrace the way of the cross, knowing that it is the way of life. Help us to be faithful witnesses of your grace and truth, even when we face opposition, persecution, or ridicule. We pray for your church around the world, that it may be united in your spirit and in your mission. We pray for those who are suffering right now for your name, that they may be strengthened by your presence and comforted by your promises. We pray for those who do not know you yet, that they may hear and respond to your gospel. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. This is not an easy call, but a costly one. It means putting God's will above our own and serving others before ourselves. It means giving up what we cannot keep to gain what we cannot lose. As we present our offerings to the Lord, let us remember his grace and his sacrifice for us. Let us give generously and joyfully as a sign of our gratitude and commitment.
Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of your Son who gave his life for us. We dedicate these offerings to you as a token of our love and trust. Use them and use us for your kingdom and your glory. Help us to follow Jesus faithfully and to take up our cross daily. In his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare for the reading of the scriptures, allow me to pray for us. Holy Spirit, you are the giver of life and the teacher of truth. As we turn to your word, open our eyes to see your wonders. Open our ears to hear your voice. Open our minds to understand your will. And open our hearts to receive your grace. Guide us into all truth and transform us by your power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Our scripture reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Jesus had uh, just asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? You know, you've heard what everybody else says, who I am. Well, who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter says, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And now we get to our next passage. Here we go. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Indeed, there are many sections of Scripture, there are many words from the mouth of Jesus that are challenging. And if we truly consider what Jesus says in our passage today, it is challenging to every one of us. It calls us into deeper faith, and this sermon will challenge you. So if you get mad at me, the sermon's not for you, it's for someone else in the sanctuary. Don't worry. (laughs) I've heard pastors say, you know, look to the person next to you and say, this sermon's for you. (laughs) But we're not going to do that. All jokes aside, uh, my father gave me this example. He learned about the St. Polycarp uh, and the martyrdom of Polycarp. And I think it is a powerful example that he was willing to follow Jesus even unto death. Has anyone ever heard the story of Polycarp? Good. I get to teach it to you. And dad, you get to hear it again. So Polycarp, he was a Christian for many, 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 many years. And he was always avoiding the Roman government because they were searching for him. He was a big leader in the church, and they wanted to find him and charge him. But he had been in hiding. He'd been traveling a lot. Well, one day he knew they were coming after him, and he decided, you know, today's the day. So they arrested him. They put him into the public sphere, and there's a lot of interesting interchange, but... The Roman guards beg of him. He is elderly. He's 86 years old. 86 years old. And they beg of him. Polycarp, recant. Deny Jesus. Deny Jesus. Say you're not a Jesus follower. And we can save your life. We don't want to hurt you. You're 86 years old. And Polycarp... Faithful, even to the last, he says, quote, 86 years have I served him, and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king and my savior? We see the example of Polycarp. He denied himself. He took up the cross, and he followed Jesus to his very last breath. And if you're on the church email list, you probably received this email, hopefully, and you read it. Uh, my one friend at his church, they sponsor missionaries in Haiti, and one of those missionaries' wives was kidnapped. That's why uh, when, when they preach in the United States, they don't get on camera, because if someone finds out they're a missionary and associates their face to their name and to being the work of Christ, uh, they could be persecuted. And yet they continue to serve Jesus even when it is hard Jesus calls us to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow him. And so to try to boil it down into a a key point, 
It's this. Seize the day for Jesus. Seize the day for Jesus. If you just leave it as seize the day, well, there could be a whole host of reasons why. We're called daily to pick up that cross and to follow Jesus. Now, that message has been abused uh, in studying for the sermon. I've heard of people who would go to their pastor and, it, and they had an abusive relationship. They were victims, whether it be a friendship, whether it be a romantic relationship at some point, And their pastor would say, well, you just have to pick up your cross, grin and bear it. That is not Jesus' message today. When he says, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me, he's not saying grin and bear it. I think half my sermon illustrations are broken shoes. You know I like to walk a lot. I like to run a lot. And this is just a tiny little example where my shoe was busted on Thursday. And you know, I could have said, I'm just going to grin and bear it and deal with it and walk around with a broken shoe. Or you know what? I went home and got a new one and I'm going to glue this one. I, I fixed the problem, right? I'm going to fix the problem. Um, that, that's the, the, the message of Jesus today. When he says, deny yourself, take up your cross. He's not saying just suffer through life, fake it till you make it, pretend like everything's okay, and don't deal with the problems and concerns of your life. That's not what he's saying. Jesus is saying every single day and almost every single hour, you're going to be called to choose to die to self and live for Christ. There are many times, Heather can attest to it, where I'll say, I don't really want to do it. Well, if you don't really want to do it, then don't do it. Well, Jesus wants me to do it, so I'm going to do it. That's the call to every Christian. Sometimes, sometimes we do things we don't want to do. And yes, it would be better if we had the right attitude. Maybe this morning, coming to church despite the, the cold temperature outside, you didn't want to do it, but you're here. Thank God for that. Sometimes just waking up and doing your routine is a challenge for people. And you know, uh, God calls us to pick up the cross, to daily deny ourselves and follow Jesus, even when it is hard. It is a daily surrender to Jesus. A criminal would carry one beam of the cross because to carry your cross was a one-way journey. It was a one-way journey. And indeed, every single day, it's a one-way journey where we follow the Lord. Diedrich Bonhoeffer said, when Christ calls a person, Jesus calls them to come and die. There's a reason why Mark orders this story the way it's ordered. You know, Peter just confessed Jesus as the Son of God. And and Jesus basically, if you're in my Bible study, I, I always say you get a gold star. You know, you get a gold star. Good job. Peter gets a gold star. And then in this very next section, (laughs) Jesus reveals his ministry, that he's going to suffer and die and rise again. And then Peter rebukes him privately. And then Jesus rebukes Peter publicly, calling him Satan. That's pretty harsh. And so we then see, why did Jesus do this? Because Jesus must bear the cross, and we too must follow him. So he he expands upon why he rebuked Peter in this section as well. When we look at Peter's response to Jesus, Jesus saying, I'm going to suffer, and on the third day rise again, Peter didn't want that. (laughs) Peter wanted Jesus in his own image. Very often, we want Jesus in our own image. Whenever we quote the words of Jesus, whenever we think about the characteristics of Jesus, it's very common to uh, think about the attributes of Jesus we really like. But then we also need to remember He took up the cross for us. We also need to remember that just as Jesus walked on water, He also got a whip and overturned tables. Just as Jesus healed many people, he also rebuked Peter in public. We need to take all of Jesus. Jesus is not an hors d'oeuvre tray. 
Or you can just pick the ones you want. I'm a picky eater. I'm sure most of you have found that out. I'm a very picky eater. But when it comes to the words of Jesus and the commandments of Jesus, we are not to be picky eaters. But Peter, at this moment in time, wanted Jesus in his own image. He fell into the trap of projecting his values onto God. Uh, The famous theologian Feuerbach said that humans essentially invent God as an extreme extension of their self-believed attributes. Basically, you know, uh, I believe charity is important, so God is the most charitable thing on earth. And I I think, um, I don't know, being strong is important, so, so there you go. God is the strongest thing ever on earth. And, and that's what he says, that humans are inventing God. Problem is, <laughs> Peter got a Jesus he didn't want. This proves Feuerbach is wrong because Jesus is about to do something that Peter does not want. He refuses. Here, Jesus is going to suffer and die. Peter probably wanted a leader who would overthrow the Roman government set up a new government for the Jewish people, take over the world. That's what Peter envisioned. And he would be the right-hand man. You know, That's what Peter envisioned. Oh, beloved, how often do we have our own plans for God to rubber stamp and approve? Right? Uh, that's why it says in Proverbs, humans make their plans, but the Lord directs their steps. Here, Peter had his own plans. He had his own idea of Jesus. He had his own idea of God, but that is not what was going to happen. Whatever life calls us to, we are to follow Jesus. Jesus gives us this divine command. It is a three-part command. Verse 34, deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow me. Uh, That that word uh, for denying yourself it's not designed to say, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. When he's saying deny yourself, he's just saying, or not just saying, but he's saying, uh, let go of yourself. Let go of your ego. Let go of your arrogance. Let go of your plans. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Die to yourself. And follow my ways, Jesus says. I think humility is an important characteristic for everybody. And laughter is important. As uh, G.K. Chesterton once said, the reasons why angels can fly is because they take everything lightly. (laughs) And they take themselves lightly. Uh, Beloved, it's important to laugh. It's especially important to laugh at yourself. You know, um, I love it when people joke about me. If you wear sunglasses because I'm balding, that's okay. I get it, you know. Um, There's a running joke with our musicians that I like my songs to resolve. We didn't get that today. So if you saw me (laughs) for our offertory hymn. So if you saw me give a a side eye, uh, you can watch on the camera. I gave Amy a side eye today. Uh, That's because the song didn't resolve. Anyway. You know, it's fun to joke. It's fun to take ourselves lightly because it shows you denied yourself. You, you lost the attachment to the worldly things of this life. It's important. Uh, as Jesus was crucified on that cross, he let go of all attachments to this life. He gave his mother to John to be taken care of. He, he let go of himself. He released his own spirit into the Lord's hands. Beloved, in the same way, we... We are called to let go of our attachments to this world. And you know you're attached to the things of this life when they start to go away. When you receive physical pain or physical injury, then you find out, have I been clinging clinging to my health more than I've been clinging to the cross? When you lose your job or when your 401k takes a dip, then, then you realize... Have I been trusting Jesus enough? As C.S. Lewis once said, God whispers in our pleasures, but shouts in our pain. He's saying whenever we 
go through hardship, whenever our cross that we're bearing gets heavy, that's when you know if you're following Jesus or not. That's when you know if you're going to uh, the, the right path or if you're veering off, if you're getting unbalanced. Jesus gives the d- divine command, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Someone once put it, Jesus is saying, join me in the death march. Join me on the way. Because this cross we often wear, we often use, we might even have a bumper sticker. It, it is a torturous device that was used for criminals, blasphemers, people who win against the Roman government. Many people in the early church suffered on the cross because they were deemed uh, traitors to the, lo- to the overarching government. It was not a commodity to wear that. It was an emblem of shame and suffering. He says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and join me. But his command has four incentives behind it. In some translations, you get four fours, F-O-R's, four fours. For if you lose your life, you will save it. If you lose your life in this, in this world, you will save it for eternity. If you let go of your attachments, if you follow Jesus and wish to serve Jesus, you will receive eternal life. If you trust in Him that He died for every one of your sins and live for Him, you're making an investment forever. Four, the second four. If you gain the world, but lose your soul. Beloved, the teachings of this life will say, Focus on the world. Get it, get it all while the getting's good. Uh, grab life by the horns because soon you won't have grip strength. That's the message of this life. But Jesus says, no, there's something far more beyond than just this life. We actually have something to look forward to. You know, Polycarp and the wife of that missionary, they did what they did. They knew the struggles that they would face. They knew the suffering and the pressures they would endure, but yet they did it. They didn't live this life while the getting's good. They knew that their treasures were in heaven and nobody could take it away. Beloved, do we live that way? To quote the Lee Green song, if tomorrow all our things are gone, And we had to work for our life. What would we do? Would we trust in Jesus to carry us? Or would we trust in our own two hands? Would we trust that God will provide, that God would see to everything we needed? Or would we worry and stress and and beg, borrow, and steal and, and just usurp, manipulate, take advantage of others? Jesus says, you could gain the whole world but lose your soul. And then he says, what can you give for your soul? For what can you give for your soul? The third thing, Jesus is saying, you are priceless. What can you give to your soul? What is the value of a human life? And I'm sure there are multiple ways you can look at like tax returns and all our financial gurus can figure out, well, in this area, your life is worth this amount, right? (laughs) Uh, But all that is a joke because Jesus says we are valuable, incredibly valuable. Beloved, as Christians, we can say without a doubt that every human being at every age range, at every social economic status is valuable in the eyes of God because every single person is made in the image of God. That is an exclusively Christian claim. We can say, you are valuable. You are incredibly valuable. The words of Jesus. For what can anyone give for your soul? You are so incredibly valuable. We are not just clumps of cells. We're not just dancing to the tune of our DNA. Jesus says, each and every one of you is valuable in God's eyes. We're not just worthless. We're not just bags of protoplasm. There we go. And the fourth four. For if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you, Jesus essentially says. It's the, in one, my, my eyes, one of the most challenging uh, words of the lips of Jesus. Do not be ashamed. 
My dad's band was called Not Ashamed. Um, it's a call for all of us not to be ashamed of Jesus. When I read uh, Corey Ten Boom's book, uh, I'm ashamed because I can't remember it. Even she, as an evangelist, struggled because there were times where she wouldn't talk about Jesus. There were times where she would deny Christ. Even the most famous evan- one of the most famous evangelists in her time, she struggled with that. Peter himself, as Jesus would be crucified, would deny Jesus three times, and yet Jesus would restore him. Beloved, we are called not to be ashamed of Jesus Not to look the other way when we see other Christians being persecuted or humiliated for their faith. We're not to be afraid of the truth. Beloved, if you have opposition, that means you're standing for something. If you're experiencing shame, that means you're standing for something. If someone causes you pain because you are a Christian, that means you're standing for something. Beloved, Jesus calls us not to an easy life. He says it will be hard. I know in seminary, <laughs> there are some times where <laughs> the cross I had to bear were <laughs> really thick books that put me to sleep. Um, <laughs> indeed, we are called to hardship. We are called to face different kinds of difficulty. Many boast in their strength because they think that's all they have. But the Apostle Paul says, boast in your weakness. Paul boasts in his weakness because he knew his weakness pointed to Jesus. Jesus redeemed parts of Paul, every aspect of Paul. Jesus is not an adrenaline junkie who just says, keep on taking risks. I've seen... Jesus presented in such a way that, you know, just do it. Just take risks. Keep taking risks. Uh, Jesus calls us every single day to surrender to him. Sometimes that will mean taking risks. Other times that might mean doing the same routine. Here we have the risen Savior who bids us come and die. And that's just not a message for us, but it's also a message for our family, for our children, for our grandchildren. This is, you can tell it's very used, this is my children's Bible uh, that my parents gave me when I was two years old. Um, We should, when, when you think about the future for your children, for your grandchildren, is Jesus in it? Is Jesus in their future? Do you want them to follow Jesus? I know for my parents, yes, they wish the best for me. They wanted me to have a good job. They wanted me to have a good education. But at the end of the day, they wanted me to have faith in Jesus. And that's a calling I wish for each and every one of you, for every person in your family. Trust in Jesus. Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow him. It may not be an easy road, but it is a valuable road. I'll end with a quote from Janet Hunt on picking up the cross daily. She says, We will never do it perfectly, but that cannot and must not stop us from doing all that we can to attempt to follow the one who did, who picked up his cross, suffered, and died for us all. So while I recognize my neighbor's flaws, still I am lifted up by the heroic witness of their past. Beloved, Even though we fail, may we trust in Jesus. May we, each and every one of us, seize the day for Jesus. May we pick up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow him. Amen.
thank you for coming out this morning and worshiping God together. It is a joy to be in God's house, and it is an honor to be your pastor. And may we daily deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow him. I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. Let us do it together. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you follow him in the way of the cross. May, you, may, may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you as you seek his will and his glory. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you live for him and for the gospel. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.